All right, guys, another day, another drop list. So stay tuned. Drop it. Welcome back, gainers, to another incredible, exciting, fantastic drop list episode of <gasps> Coding Games. Games. And if you're new to the show, I'm Adam. I'm Zach, and this is Princess Royal High. It's looking very lovely today. Looking a little toony, looney tunes. Today. Looney. So bow down, respect. Looney tunes. That's got Marvin the Martian on there. Looney. Yeah. All right, guys, so today is Saturday, and we got a brand new drop list because every week new books are dropping. So uh, we got a cool drop list for you. Excite. Actually, this was a really good list. There was like a lot of easy bo books to see that like hit the toilet bowl, mm -hmm. so to speak. So and um, Princess uh, picked up some new games. We haven't had some Princess games in a while, so she picked up a book from our friend Sands uh, group. So we're going to be opening that and see what was on her mind at the time she was buying this book. Ah, all right. But before we get into any of that, Zach needs to power up. Take it to the next yeah. level. Yes, I need a drink of beer to survive today. Let's see. It's a censored rare release. Epic Brewing. Big Bad Baptist. Naked Baptist. It's always better when it's naked. It's Imperial Stout Asian Whiskey Barrels. Ooh. No wonder it was so expensive. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Yeah, that's what Apparently it, like. it costs a lot to age something in a whiskey yes. barrel. You gotta whisper sweet nothings, you know, like plants like music, beer likes whispers. <laughs> I like my comics like I like my scotch. <laughs> Whoa. Is it good? It's Are you in a better really mood now? Wow. Wow, that's really good. This is uncensored. This is really. gonna be a good video, I can wow. already tell. Alright guys, All right. so let's kick this off right. So, if you're new to our uh, Comic Games drop list, which... Uh, we've been doing it for a while, and we're having a great time doing this. It's basically, we scour the internet for hot lists from a year ago, and we try to find books that were really hot one year ago today, and uh, uh, books that basically dropped, that went decreased in price a lot. And uh, Zach will kind of give you an update on the pricing, as well as whether or not it's a good idea to buy this book because mm -hmm. it's a low price, or just let it keep going low, or just forget that you ever heard about this book. Some, yeah. Sometimes that happens. Toilet, Sometimes guys. you want to forget. forget. So um, we'll kick it off right, and I think this week we had three of the five books, so we we definitely hit that drop list. So uh, number one on the list we have witches, or as Zach calls it, witches, uh, right. from Image Comics, 2014. Uh, this is a book written by Scott Snyder and the artwork done by Jock. Uh, kind of cool. I I actually never read this story, but after. Seeing that that's the creative group for it, I wish I would. I need to pick this book. I think we had it at one time when we, we let it go. We should have kept. I think we sold it a year ago when it was hot. I think yes. that's when we when we sold it. But uh, as far as I know, the story it's a really cool horror series, um, kind of a retake on witches. And there's something to do with these trees where they do ceremonies or people go to die in these trees. But uh, it is it's a short run. It's only six issues. So if you're trying to get into it, you don't have to get too invested in it. The, they call it like a mini run. But uh, Basically, a year ago today, Scott Snyder tweeted that uh, there was a screenplay for the pilot that came out. So all of a sudden, this book started going crazy. Didn't get like super expensive, but it, more expensive than cover price was the big deal. Don't forget, there is a second print out there. I think that's slightly more valuable than the first print ish. There's some. And uh, yeah, what do you got on this book, Zach? What do you know? Oh, what's the word? I know a lot. I don't know. No, maybe not. So, a price a year ago for a CGC 9.8 on eBay was $175. Whoa. And now it's $49.88. Whoa. CGC 9.8. Whoa. Range $49.88, $249.99. Average $118.35. Don't buy this book and you just unless you just love the series. If you love the series, you can't go wrong. Buy raw, buy graded. But if you don't know anything about this book, so you can spend your money more wisely for your investing. That's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. Man, I have to make a judgment call after I read it. If I read it and I really love it, then I might want to, you know, you might want to invest in it. But like I said, once the, the, they do a show, it, like after the show, I don't know if it'll go anywhere. It's kind of hard. Six issues doesn't mean it has like a lot of longevity for the book to like become a thousand dollar book in a couple of years. Yeah. Probably not likely. So uh, yeah, interesting. Next book on the list though, this is going to be a lot to talk about. We got Ghost Rider, 
Number 28, this is Ghost Rider Volume 2 from 1992. It's a good year. Andy Kubert and Howard uh, Mackey. Uh, Mackey is the, the creative group on this one. But uh, this is first cameo, cameo appearance of the Midnight Suns. Not first appearance of the Midnight Suns, but the Midnight Suns consist of Ghost Rider, Johnny Blaze, Morbius, Blade, Hannibal King, uh, Frank Drake, Sam Buchanan, I actually went to high school with a guy named Sam Buchanan. That's interesting. Ooh. Victoria Montesi and Louise Hastings. So, interesting group. Starts out really strong, and I'm not sure who the characters at the end of that were. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, what makes this book popular is you have First Caretaker and Lilith, uh, Mother of Demons, not Mother of Dragons, and uh, mm -hmm. Zach's personal favorite, Meat Market. Oh, Meat Market. Yeah, which is an offspring of uh, of Lilith. So, kind of cool, kind of cool character. So, this book was getting hot, and... I don't think it's dropped too, too much, but well, Zach will give those numbers on. But there's been a lot of spec on Ghost Rider coming to the MCU ever since Blade. Ever since they're like, for sure Blade's here, and we know who's playing Blade, and he talked a little bit in uh, in the one movie. Uh, Ghost Rider's just right behind that. You know he's coming. But they also, the spec on this was that the uh, Marvel actually like purchased like an LLC for this Richmond Street production company, which is kind of like, you know, way out there, but... Richmond Street is connected to uh, a street next to Cypress Hill Cemetery where uh, the other Ghost Rider, Dan Ketch, was resurrected to be Ghost Rider. So it's kind of like a weird like way they come around that to be like, okay, Ghost Rider is coming because of this. I could see it. I could see it. It's just it's way, way out there. But uh, don't forget the newsstand out there garnishes a little bit more value. So there's a newsstand. But Zach will break these numbers down for you. It's something we were hunting for a year ago for sure. Right, right. Um, you gotta think about it. It's a cameo. So, anyway, so range is from a year ago was four hundred dollars to now one hundred fifty-two fifty. It dropped, you know, more than half. Ooh. More than half. Uh, low pr lowest price it's got is one hundred thirty-two fifty to the uh, highest is eight sixty-nine. That Dang. was a new, that was a new stand. Dang. Average two forty-four fifty-two. I mean. Go for the newsstand, mm -hmm. but I would say you should probably pick this book up because Marvel will want to do more kind of dark villain, dark uh, movie monster kind of stuff. Yeah, supernatural. I mean, yeah, it, you got it. You got to check off that base, and the horror fans are just asked for. It. You don't have to go too crazy, but just enough, and people fall in line. People like this team, mm -hmm. like the uh, collection of characters. I know it's a good, it's a good group, you know. A really good group of characters in the Midnight Sun. Yeah, one hundred fifty-two dollars and fifty cents for direct CGC nine point eight. It being a dark cover, it, it being a poly bag. It yeah, had that's a card. That's the other thing too. Yeah, what's well, a poly bag book from the nineties? So you got to be careful. I, a lot of people say if it's been the poly bag too long, you know, twenty years later plus, mm -hmm. it, it actually kind of have more likely to be damaged than not in the poly bag. Exactly. That's the thing you got to be careful with. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this would pair well with, like Adam said, uh, Ghost Rider thirty one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. First bowl too. Yeah. First bowl. I think yeah. it. All right. So yeah. Cool. You got a you got a stamp of approval from Zach there. Mm -hmm. All right. Next up on the list, we don't have this one. And I wish I did because it's a really cool book. We got Marvel Comics presents one seventeen from nineteen ninety two. This is uh, Sam Keith and Howard Mackey again on this title. Um, just an awesome. You can see here. It's an awesome cover. You got Venom. You know, uh, crushing the trade dress on the top with with. Uh, uh, Wolverine underneath, just killer, killer book. Only major significance of this of this book is that it's the first meeting of Venom and Wolverine together in a in a story. So it's like two iconic characters. They needed to meet up at some point. It would be an amazing battle. But um, you know, a uh, little side note. It's also a preview of Ravage twenty ninety nine. I don't know if anyone's looking for that. It's the only original character from the twenty ninety nine series. But I don't think anyone liked that character at all. Unless you do like him, you know. But uh. I don't know. It's a cool book. It's uh, I think it got hot like a little while ago when like the Venom movies were coming out. And people were thinking Hugh Jackman might come back to do some stuff, but mm -hmm. I think now it's maybe a little bit of a long shot. It's also kind of a weird series that whole Marvel Comics Presents was doing Wolverine, same time Wolverine was doing Wolverine, but you know running at the same time. But mm -hmm. Zach will break these numbers down for you. It's an interesting book. So this book a year ago four hundred twenty five dollars, now one hundred fifty seven dollars and 50 cents range of 140 to 425 uh 
yeah, average T23.05. Um, this one's a, kind of a hard one to analyze because this isn't really a, it's kind of a battle cover, but that's what's kind of going hot right now, battle covers. Mm -hmm. But this is a meeting, more like a meeting kind of book, meeting between Wolverine and Venom. And those are actually in two different kind of movie universes. So it's kind of hard to say what, if they're ever going to meet and if this is ever going to like make a peak again. Mm -hmm. It's, it, it's a great cover. I mean, for that in a CGC 9.8 for $157.50. 50 yeah. So I would say get a 9.8, 150 it's cheap something. Right now. That's cheap. Yeah. $150. I mean, that's not bad for a CTC night play with that kind of a cover. No. If you can get the new stand, even better. But I would say if you got the money and you like the cover, get it. Yeah, I didn't realize I wanted this book until I saw that. And then I'm like, okay, it's cheap right now and it's a really cool cover. I like both those characters. So, yeah. But get it in a 9.8. True. Very true. It's too new. Too there's nice. a chance it could go a little up over the years. Yeah. Yeah, there's a chance. 9.8, it's a white cover. Mostly white. Yeah. If I remember correctly. Yes, that is true. All right, next up on the list. This is, uh, this is a cool one. So we got Infamous Iron Man, number one from 2016. Uh, at that point in Marvel's uh, time, you had Brian Michael Bendis doing everything. So obviously he did this one with Alex Maleev as uh, the artist on this one. Um, this is Doctor Doom Becomes Iron Man. So uh, kind of a cool storyline, but the big thing about this is Tony Stark uh, becomes like an AI. So he's kind of like... Uh, the new Jarvis, I guess you'd call it, sort of, for the book. And um, this got really hot a year ago, in May 2021, when Hasbro released a new toy that had kind of like the see-through head, where people were, like, insinuating that it was, well, Iron Man with a see-through head, or it was supposed to be, like, an AI, or, like, maybe it looks like he's a computer version of Tony. So, like, everyone's like, okay, this is crazy. And at this point, everyone knows... Uh, Rob Downey Jr. retired, you know, from being Iron Man, but once he got Riri showing up, and then um, they're like, it's a good chance he could re reprise the role just as a voice actor, you know, instead of actually having to use, like, his face for the for the stuff, but it's kind of cool, but I think there's still a good chance that could happen, but everyone forgot about it. Like, everyone's like, okay, just the book got hot, and then all of a sudden it went back down, and, you know, Riri's for sure coming in Wakanda forever, and then there's a chance she's going to be in Armor Wars, too, which is probably really likely. So, um, you know, I would say it's, you know, it's a good chance to be picking up this book right now. You know, because if, if she does show up and they do the AI, that's your one chance to sell it. So, Zach will break down the numbers for you on this. All right. So, number-wise, a year ago, $250 for a CGC 9.8 on eBay. Now, $65. It's dropped a lot. And the range $65 to 274 average $136.26. So the thing is, it might not happen, but it would be smart for Robert Downey Jr. and the MCU if they brought his at least his voice back. Yeah, I think it would be cool. You know, kind of like guiding, training, re re mm -hmm. uh, as a new Iron Man. I mean, I think it would be a smart thing to do and on both parts. And, uh, you know, you don't want to leave a company that paid you a lot of money hanging a little bit and willing to pay you a little bit more they're left on good terms i think i would say buy a lot of these in raw and at least one cgc 9.8 for 65 dollars i mean make that in a day make make it in a couple hours yeah yeah this is one of those books like if you have it now's the time to sell it. like we basically remembered that we had this in our spec box and pulled them all out we're like hey yeah, we better, we bought these like what a year ago, mm -hmm. and now we need to sell as soon as, as soon as it's about to go back up. So it might as well get rid of it now. Unless right. you love the book, then hang on to them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. All right, we got one more for you guys. Last but not least, and uh, this is Zach's Zach personal favorite here. You got Captain America sixteen from Volume Five, two thousand six. This is the Ed Brubaker run. Uh, Steve Epting did the artwork on this one. Great series, but yeah, first appearance of Red Skull's daughter. Uh, Cynthia Schmidt as Sin. So, another thing to remember about Sin is she was previously Mother Superior. So, Mother Superior's first appearance is in Captain America 2090. So, also awesome cover. They're both great, great covers. That, that's an awesome cover with cross, crossbones in the background. All right. So, the reason this book was trending really, really a lot back in May of 2021 
is that's when they there a rumor announced that Sin was going to be the main villain of Captain America uh, 4 when that one gets released. I remember Zach and I were talking about that. We started trying to pick up like her first cover appearance and then we picked up all those Mother Superior books and then we picked up what three of this book as well. We were speculating on that hard. It kind of died down a little bit. Um, you know, like no one's really said any. There was actually rumors that were like, is Captain America 4 even going to happen? Even though for sure it's going to happen with Sam Wilson. But I think it's a cool idea to use Sin as a character because the Red Skull character is such a great villain. But since the actor Hugo Weaving's not going to reprise the the role, he said he doesn't want to do it anymore. It's easy to use her daughter. They use his daughter and like continue on with the storyline, but with her instead. Plus, she's just a cool looking character. Like, you know, even like the new stuff that's coming out, she's got that mask on, so it's really dope. You yeah. Know, really, yeah, really absolutely. cool. So, Zach will break down the numbers for you, though. All right, so, this book is very volatile. Mm -hmm. So, I would be careful buying this book in any graded form, even though I did. <laughs> but anyway, so the price range is $450 a year ago to $300. It's ranged from 115 to 450 Not that many sales, there's only 36 CGC 9.8s on the census. Two of them are signed. I would say, if you're going to pick this book up at all, <laughs> and I picked the one up too. Um, <laughs> if you're going to pick this book up, up at all, find high-grade raw copies. Yeah. And get them signed and graded and fast-track it. If this book blows up, the signed copies are going to be a premium. Yeah. Premium. Especially yeah. by the cover artist, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why I would, yeah, I would highly recommend you doing that if you're going to do it at all. So yeah. Get those Definitely things. a cool character. So I hope something comes out of Sin. Not just because they buy a lot of books, but it's a cool character. I think it's a cool idea. I honestly, I think they should, like, kind of incorporate, like, the Red Skull. Like, she's the daughter of the Red Skull. Mm -hmm. So she should still, and it's female, she should still try, they should still try to make her look pretty, but all, at the same time, also, like, Maybe like have red skull like veins or or some yeah. kind of some kind of like it's kind of subtle but at the same time there's something supernatural something powerful going on with her. I don't remember if she has any powers or not though, but she's pretty cool. She's yeah. definitely really smart. I mean, Red Skull is like he kind of is like a superhuman kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like her to have like superhero human power. Maybe it's superhuman. I'll let them know. Intellect. I'll let them know. That's what I would do. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell the higher like ups. I wish they, I wish they would ask me because yeah. I got a lot of opinions on that kind of stuff. There you go. There you <laughs> go. All right, guys, that's the drop list for this week. As usual, let us know what, if you guys had any books on the drop list. Obviously, uh, we made a few mistakes. Maybe some of them, you know, good. Some, you know, some mistakes. But oh, well. you never know. It happens to all of us. All right. Before we let you go, we gotta find out what Prince's gains. What was Prince's thinking about when she picked up some stuff from Sans? And uh, Sans is a like, very good friend of the show. So make sure Sans Group, the Cookie Monster, check him out. He's got a YouTube channel because he does a lot of auctions on YouTube with some a bunch of friends that were all good, great uh, people to buy from. Mm -hmm. We'll vouch for all of them. And then also on his Instagram, uh, I think this was like what they call a pop-up sale, claim sale, claim sale, claim sale. And Princess claimed it. And uh, yeah, so great guy. Check him out. Follow him on Instagram. <laughs> what was Princess thinking? Yeah, he supported us a lot over the years. So yeah, he's a good guy. Mm -hmm. Good person, I should say. Good, very good cookie person. And for people that like cookies, I like cookies oh, too. Definitely. I get you. Except if you like oatmeal cookies. I like oatmeal cookies. Uh, get out of here. That's my favorite cookie. Get out of here. You're not one of us. <laughs> like snickerdoodle. I love it. Like, it's like grandma's snickerdoodles. Oh, oatmeal cookies oh my are God. the best. Like a, not like a okay. brand, but like, you know, your grandma makes some snickerdoodles. Oh, that's like... going to be jelly. All right, we'll start with this way. Okay, so we got... Uh... Carnage Forever, uh, number five, the variant. I'm not sure if it's this, but this is cool. It actually looks just like the book we were just talking about, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, doesn't yeah, it look yeah. Just like, like 117. Yeah, the Marvel Presents 117. It's almost yeah. like an homage to that. Yeah, it might be. It's like Carnage smashing the title instead of uh, uh, Venom. Yeah. That's crazy. Interesting how that works I'm gonna out. I'm going to have my say. And I like that book, though. Ooh. Okay, I don't know what this oh, is. Dude, wait, wait, let me take a look. But it's That's cool. That's dope. Oh, it's a J. Scott Campbell. Oh, it's on the side. It's Image. Oh, David Mac. David Mac. Kabuki. 
Kabuki. Kabuki. Dude, that's sick. That is really cool. Dude. Yeah. I'm kind of jealous. Mm -hmm. that. But that's not the one you were saying I was going to be jealous about. Nope. There's one more. I'm a little jealous Zach's, of One of Zach's personal favorite books. Big Kid Winner. Yeah. That's a cool book, though. All right. One more. Personal favorite. One more. Oh, I found this book so late. Though. Yeah, this is cool. So you got Carnage, Mind Bomb, Ooh. number one. And this is... Oh, this is super nice. I love it's like... Like when a foil book does good. You know what I mean? Like, there's so many cool foil books, but they're all just like automatically kind of cruddy because it's like a 90s foil book. But every once in a while, one shines through, yes. you know? And they're like, okay, here's a nice expensive foil cover from the 90s. Yeah. It's, it's rare. I mean, it's that book. It's it's almost like always Venom books. That yeah. Like yeah. Venom and Carnage books that are like really shines through. I like that uh, first She Venom, the yeah, the gold one. Oh yeah, uh, I, yes. I would love to have that as a nine point eight. Very nice. I would love to. Well, uh, I want to say a special thank you, Sands, for those great books, Princess. Uh, that's good pickup, Princess. Smart, very smart. All right, guys. Before we let you go, as usual, if you like the show, love the show, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, so you always know when new drop lists are coming down the pipeline. And, uh, yeah, leave a comment down below. Let us know if you guys had any books on the drop list, uh, any other stuff. And let us know if you like what foil books from the 90s you thought are uh, are happening that we're missing out on. And, uh, Zach, you got anything today? Yeah, sh yeah sure. How do you do that is, I was, whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like you got to live in a water tower. You got to do the shenanigans, your Looney Tunes kind of stuff. But you're like almost like the quintessence. The quintessence? The sentence of the quince? the quince? I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> but anyways, uh, you, you got red nose, just like all the other char characters. You got gloves on, I believe. You got shoes. You're the Animaniacs. Guys, I'm I'm having a rough time trying to sh tell you how to share right now. <clears throat> so give me some suggestions, please. Oh my god, please help me. Did they have baloney in their sacks? And the, 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 the Animaniac. That's all I remember. What was the sister's name? Uh, Betty? Dot. Wasn't it Dot? Dot? It, it yeah. probably is Dot. The Warner sister, Dot. The Warner sister, Dot. All right, guys. We're going to let you go. So stay <sighs> safe until we see you next time. Remember. Get those sharing games, please. Because I'm not. <laughs>